Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Dueling Book Duel Commentary, and uh, this time uh, we're going to be messing around with this Infernoid Layer Darkness deck a bit more. I've been changing it around, doing some more testing off the books, uh, and basically I've just changed some things around. One, I've I've put another Shjet in, because even though it is a Garnet, essentially, it is still an Infernoid name, so it doesn't really you know hurt to draw it. I just I want to resolve Void Feast for the maximum possible number of you know two decatrons plus one shjet as much as possible so i just put the second copy in because i was cutting some other cards like i cut the lilith i cut the mind uh, the mind crushes uh put in the reasoning and that's why the ghost ogre is the hand trap of choice in this deck is because with monster gate and reasoning ghost ogre can at least tribute itself from field to activate its effect whereas if i was playing a different hand trap like ash blossom it could not do that such thing uh, but basically, I've changed this deck around a bit, especially uh, changed around some of the extra deck things. I put in a Galaxy Tomahawk because sometimes summoning two Sites misses does come up. It doesn't come up nearly as often as you think it would, but it does come up, and when that does happen, uh, you have a host of different plays you can do with these Link Monsters. The most common thing I end up doing, though, is usually Underclock Taker into a Firewall Dragon. Um, like, just minor things like that. But overall, uh, just changed some ratios around, just made the deck. Uh, gave the deck another powerful starter in the form of Reasoning. Uh, even though there are a lot of cards you can, in theory, hit off of Reasoning, that is actually good because you have the 4s, you have the 3s, you have this 8, and you have these 1s, so your opponent could potentially not call it correctly, but I digress. This video is going to be against a true Draco matchup that I played on the Ranked Ladder, uh, which is something that I keep hearing people say that the true Draco is like the hardest matchup for this deck, um, which I don't know if that's truly the case or not. Uh, I feel like it's definitely the simplest matchup in terms of what's happening. It's it's very much a war between simple interactions and beefy monsters uh, on both player sides of the field. And sometimes you can just get your opponent in an itch, in like a situation where like you just get them with you know something being huge like a nunku. Uh, and like that usually ends up being the case, especially with Darkest Diabolos. Like Darkest Diabolos is a card that's inherently immune to Masterpiece, funnily enough. Uh, so like, if you could see this card, this card could potentially be, you know, a pivotal factor in that mirror match. Or not mirror match, Jesus, in that matchup. But basically, that's all I really wanted to uh, talk about for this little portion before we jump into the match. Uh, like I said, this was played on the uh, ranking ladder. Uh, I play all these on the ranking ladder because I want to uh, I want to try and actually get people that are trying to win. And if I'm playing anything that's not TCG legal, possibly in the future, then I will more than likely uh, end up exp like uh, uh, delegating that out to people on my live streams, or I might talk to a friend and be like, "Hey, can you play me with a meta deck and unrated uh, and try to win uh, as much as possible so that I can at least get good replays out of it?" Uh, but anyway. Enough of that jibber-jabber, enough of that talking, those are the changes I've made, those are the things you need to know about the deck. I still feel like 60 cards might be better in the long run. Uh, I haven't had any chance to look into that or test it, but this is what I've been messing around with because I've been trying to keep it at like around 40 cards, just to try and test the extent of what can be done with this deck in a 40 card variant, or close to 40 card variant, uh, before I start moving up to 60 cards, because like I said, 40 cards might be holding the deck back unnecessarily, but I digress. With that all out of the way, let's jump straight into the first game because I talk way too long during these parts of the videos. Alright, so going into the first game, I lose Rock, Paper, Scissors, which is honestly perfectly fine. I'm playing a deck that can go first or go second, you know, especially with Void Imagination and stuff like that. And my opening hand is not that amazing to, you know, say the least. It's got Void Feast and Voice vanish Void Vanishment in it, which depending on the matchup, I could potentially Void Vanishment for a second Void Feast and set two and then get back into the game. Uh, or I could get Imagination, but I'm playing against True Draco, as I previously stated. So my opponent starts with four sets, flips card of Demise, and then basically uh, everything is at least seemingly downhill from here. He resolves a diagram, search for Majesty Maiden, draws one off of Heritage, uh, and then drops Masterpiece turn one, which is kind of strange. I would have thought that you could, like, would have set up a Masterpiece play on my turn, um, but just raw dogging the masterpiece down seems like it's at least a little bit of a waste of resources, uh, considering that, like, that was a card that was actively added to hand off of duality when you could have picked Majesty Maiden, because that was a card that was revealed. But I digress. So, I top deck reasoning for turn, so that's cool. I'm like, this could possibly unbrick my ass. And I activate the reasoning, my opponent calls one, the first card I mill is Arm of the Wicked Warden, which sucks. And at this point, he says nothing to the on summon, uh of the card, so he's not going to pop it with Masterpiece on Summon, and honestly, I should have just Monster Gate tributed the Arima, 
Uh, but I thought that maybe if I drew a card, it would help unbreak my situation a bit, but it just it didn't end up helping. I drew a duplicate of Nunku, but I set my Void Feast and set my uh, Monster Gate, because Monster Gate is not going to be useful in this current situation, because while you can tribute your opponent's monsters with Layer of Darkness for Monster Gate, this masterpiece is spell and monster immune, and so if it's a spell immune masterpiece, you can't use Layer of Darkness to apply uh, the tributing on your opponent's cards to that masterpiece, because it's unaffected by spells. It's not an instance of it affecting the player, at least as far as all of the ruling resources that I've looked at, uh, whether that be multiple judges, multiple sites, all that sort of stuff. Like, Layer of Darkness clearly affects masterpiece and making it a valid uh, tribute target, kind of like Soul Exchange or the Monarch's Stormforth. But, uh, so basically, I'm able to resolve the Void Feast because I set the Monster Gate and the Void Feast, and if he in phase pops the Void Feast with the Masterpiece, I literally lose. He misses it, so that's good. I get to Void Feast on his draw phase, summon two guys, uh, two Decatrons, and then Shjet, which allows me to up my Infernoid count to five Infernoids total in possession on my field and engrave, which is great because that means I can start actually doing stuff with Deviate. So, on my next turn, after he clears my monsters, I summon my Deviate back and I blow up his back row. And at this point, I was expecting him to, you know, activate Master uh, Majesty Maiden's effect, and I was going to negate that with Devyati. But instead, he uses. He uses Masterpiece's effect to destroy it, which is. Which I was not expecting. I was expecting to summon my Anunku, pop the Majesty Maiden, and then have Anunku die to a Masterpiece pop. And then I was just going to, like, have to draw into a good card to utilize. But instead, he, he really just let me capitalize on the Anunku by being able to just attack over the Masterpiece, because I was able to out his board with Deviate. And then he cleared the Deviate off of my field for me in order to already use his Masterpiece. So he just gave me a very good situation. But so, going into the next game, I sided very heavily for this matchup. Double Cosmic, double Gamma Seal, triple evenly matched. Uh, like a bunch of stuff. Ash Blossoms came into the main deck as well. Uh, but so my opponent sets two and passes, flips up Anti-Spell, I'm able to just summon Petrulia out of my hand and pop it, which I didn't really need to pop it, but I wanted to put the Layer of Darkness up uh, just to see what would go on. And I had two options here with this Decatron. My option were to set, my option was to send Harmadic, making it a four, and then overlay the Tornado Dragon to pop the set and then pop like Diagram on my opponent's following turn. But I decided it would just be better to go ahead and set up for the Anunku that could eventually be dropped because Decatron and Petrulia on field, plus the Petrulia on my hand, is three. Uh, so, my opponent draws and Raw Dogs a Masterpiece down on Spell and Trap. It is not on Monster Negation, uh, but it is on Spell and Trap because he attributed a Heritage and a uh, Anti-Spell for it. I negate the uh, Heritage, giving him a token in the end phase off of my field spell, and then I'm able to just flop the, uh, the Gamma Seal that was in my hand uh, onto the Masterpiece during main phase one of my next turn. He thinks that I'm going to use the effect, but I do not use the effect. I want that token to stay there because those are two cards that could possibly be activated, and I want to be able to tribute that token to negate with uh, Anunku. So I tribute the token to negate a in phase Cosmic Cyclone, and I actually was supposed to get two tokens here. And I just now realized when I'm watching this back, uh, but I, cause I tributed uh, the Masterpiece for Gamma Seals, that's one tribute, and I attributed the token in the end phase. So that should have generated two tokens for me, but I just got one, and it doesn't really matter. Uh, but at this point, the Anunku with Layer of Darkness up is way too powerful. Now see, it was very strange, it was very simplified in terms of a game state overall. Now, could my opponent have played a little bit better? Yes, probably, and they unfortunately bricked, I assume, Game 3, because then Masterpiece came down turn 2. But, uh, but, like, game one was definitely where I was just able to take advantage of the fact that my opponent made a mistake, and that was the popping my, uh, Deviate with, uh, Masterpiece. Like, even, even, like, if you're gonna pop it with Masterpiece, it should have waited until, uh, he should have waited until my battle phase, when I go to attack over the Majesty Maiden, because then, like, I'm in the battle phase. I can't, like, summon a Nunku and then attack the Masterpiece. Uh, there was a lot of different things that could have gone on in the matchup, but that's basically how this seems to play out. Like, all the people that I see that do deck profiles for the Darkness Infernoid deck, they're like, Masterpiece deck is the hardest matchup. B I assume that's just because of Amano Iwato, uh, and no other factor, because Amano did not play any, uh, any, like, um, any part in those games, 
and it was just a very clean and simple 2-0, even with subpar hands, because that is the nature of Infernoids, and that's the nature of the matchup, like I already said. It's, it's very simple in terms of the interactions that go back and forth. You just try to bait the cards with your stuff, and then you summon big monsters, and you just go for it. And that's the exact same thing that happens on my opponent's side of the field, is that you try to bait the cards that are negating things, or popping things, or banishing things, and then you flop a big monster on the field. Now, the the thing is, is that, like, it's sort of a problem in the Masterpiece deck, because he has to make his Masterpiece immune to my Layer of Darkness, but then that also makes his Masterpiece immune to Dragonic Diagram, so my Anunku is bigger than it, so that's, that's you know, a possible problem. Uh, it's a conflict of interests, if you will. You want your monster to be bigger than Anunku, but you also want your monster to be unaffected by Layer of Darkness, so it's, it's like a catch-22 there. But basically, like, it's, it's a very interesting matchup, and I want to play more of it. Anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, give me some feedback down below if you want to suggest a deck for me to play. For these, that is at least on the Tier 2, Tier 3 spectrum or higher, uh, then definitely leave a suggestion down below, as always. But other than that, check out the links in the description to my Facebook fan page as well as my Twitch page. If you want to go follow that, enable notifications, you'll be notified next time I go and do a live stream, which I do at least one a week, at least I try to. So if you're interested in catching those live, then definitely go check out that link down below. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video.